Welcome everyone and we will get started in about one minute. For those of you all joining us now, we'll get started in about 30 seconds. Thank you for, for joining us today. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is our fourth virtual happy half hour. We are so happy to have you. Uh, it's Russ Scherer, our Director of uh, Coaching and Facilitation, and I'm Michelle Richardson, uh, Vice President of Sales Performance Research, and we're excited to be with you again. We're mixing it up a little bit this week. We're coming to you on a Thursday instead of a Friday, so we appreciate the fact that you're making that switch with us. Today's topic is focusing the restless remote sales team. And I know this is a topic that we, uh, both Russ and I have heard about uh, from, from our audience, from our clients, uh, as, as how do we really focus and, and keep our teams engaged during this time. So we're excited to bring you some fresh survey data, uh, as well as strategies for keeping your teams really focused and engaged in this environment. A couple of housekeeping items as usual. We have producer Rich joining us. Uh, he will be providing tech support and monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any technical issues, feel free to chat producer Rich directly. This webinar will be recorded and uh, sent out following our session today. Uh, we will be back next week at our regularly scheduled date and uh, time. So we'll be back on a, on a Friday at two o'clock Eastern time. And we'll be bringing you a new survey at the beginning of the week and uh, a fresh topic that we can get together and talk about next week. Today's webinar, though, is brought to you by the Brooks Sales Leadership Forum. Russ, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about that. Sure. The Leadership Forum is a, um, a series of groups. Uh, we now have every week been growing in number, where we take a small group of sales leaders and spend an hour on Wednesdays just talking about those issues that are hot to us. And all of us, some of us are facing similar issues in time. Some are facing uh, unique issues to their industry or to their business. Uh, and it gives us a chance to get together as senior sales leaders, have a conversation and see what we can learn um, uh, to help each other get through. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. I, I do want to say though, that that's a great way not only to come up with ideas, but it's also an uh, addition to the survey, ways we get information. Uh, the idea for this seminar about how do we focus uh, a, a restless sales organization uh, came out of that. The, the technical word they used in the forum a couple of weeks ago was antsy. Uh, the people have made their first series of calls. None of the salespeople they manage are used to being in their offices for, uh, uh, you know, more than a few days. And now we've got them there for a few weeks. Uh, and as a result of that, what are some ideas you can use to help them? And that's what we're really going to talk about today. Um, the, uh, the thing is that we're seeing through this, and we're getting both from conversations and survey data, is sales leaders are feeling like they need to do something. If they don't come up with some sort of clever ideas around how to engage their team, they feel their inertia setting in, that uh, there's a decline happening as they lose time to other life issues and just sort of the overall um, decline of, of, uh, of productivity. Uh, we've seen that, uh, you know, that the measurements that online gaming is way up, streaming is way up, alcohol consumption is way up. Uh, all of those are things that we're finding ways to, to fill our time with. So today we're going to talk about how do we keep our team engaged and, uh, and how can we keep them productive in this time. So with further ado, uh, Michelle, you want to share some of the data that we've been seeing? Absolutely. So for the past four weeks, uh, we've been tracking data not only on these weekly topics such as keeping your team focused. Last week we talked about uh, collections, we've talked about KPIs and metrics. But we're also looking to really understand what is the impact? 
that this current environment is having on, um, on our respondents' businesses. So we're looking at a few key metrics that we're tracking from week to week. The first one is the impact on sales results. So just we're going to take you through kind of what the trends are looking like and have been looking like over the past few weeks. So the first week we started, uh, most of us started our, our work from home initiatives. The week of March 20th, as you can see, we had some folks that were um, slightly behind plan to significantly behind plan, but there were still about 30% of you that um, had not felt any uh, significant effects from, uh, from the environment. As we moved on to the next week, we're starting to see some folks move uh, slightly behind plan uh, and fewer of you that were um, either ahead or right where you needed to be. And that trend uh, even continued more through last week. So last week, we only had 11% uh, that were where they should be or ahead of plan. And almost 50% of you uh, were slightly behind plan and another 41% significantly behind plan. So this week, actually, the numbers are looking a little bit different. So there are slightly more of you that are significantly behind plan, about 3% uh, increase in that number, uh, but there's fewer of you that are that are uh, slightly behind plan. So that's down 9% this week. And uh, we're seeing about 16% uh, actually that are where they should be or ahead of plan. And that 3% significantly ahead of plan is new. So um, there is some, some silver lining on that news. And Michelle, I would say that that kind of fits the uh, the, the layout there, the vision that we had when we started, that, that there was an initial kind of shock period we were getting used, and now we're all kind of adjusting to what life looks like today, and uh, even our clients and our customers are starting to figure out, okay, uh, I'm still in business, I can run at this operation, and so we're getting clarity, and that's, uh, uh, that's to me, is a good, uh, a good step that we're now moving into this, uh, uh, what I'm going to call the um, the quarantine period of how do we keep our businesses going when we're isolated. Exactly. I think you're 100% right. There are organizations that are starting to kind of figure out how to work in, in this environment. And, uh, and I think that's certainly trying to or starting to show. Uh, the, the other metric that uh, we're, we're tracking on a regular basis uh, is the length of time that this environment uh, will have on business. So what is the, how long do you, our survey respondents, expect to have some kind of business impact based on this current environment? And um, these numbers uh, have also been very interesting to track. So if you look at the first week where we started, really, I think, reflects that uncertainty that we've been talking about from week to week. Kind of an even spread from less than four weeks all the way through <laughs> through the end of 2020. And as we progress, people are starting to get more uh, of a feeling of what this impact's going to look like. And, and uh, at the, the second week of our survey, about 35% of you, that largest chunk, was expecting six to eight weeks. Last week, we're starting to see more of that spread uh, for a longer impact. And uh, now it's looking like anywhere from six to eight weeks to even um, three to six months. And now, now we're actually into the, the second quarter of the calendar year. And again, we're starting to see that those numbers kind of shift out. I think the longer that folks are having to work from home and under these restrictions, um, the longer that they're starting to see that, that impact potentially last. So at this point, almost 75% of you are saying we're going to feel something over, you know, between the next one, two, maybe even through the end of the year quarters. So um, you know, an interesting shift is, as we continue to track these, this data. I mean, one of the things I'll note is we've now got enough weeks of data. There's a question about the, the sharing of this information. Um, we both publish and post this webinar so that people can watch it again. But we're also putting together uh, research briefs that we will be posting on our website and updating from time to time so that you can look at this data in real time and, and be able to, to have it understand, share it with your team members and with your leadership. Exactly, so it will be more of a, it will be a combination of, of the data trends, plus some of the strategies that we can offer to, um, to help some of, uh, address some of these issues. I'll so also we'll just- uh, our sponsor. <laughs> uh, as Michelle told you the first time, we are both doing this remote. 
she's in North Carolina, I'm in California, so forgive if we uh, interrupt each other. Uh, actually, the, the Brooks Sales Leadership Forum uh, is an opportunity for sales leaders to join, to have a conversation with their peers. We keep it in small groups of about eight people, but we have been adding the number of groups each week, and we have another couple of groups that are ready to open. So if you're interested, email us at forum at thebrooksgroup.com. These are confidential uh, discussions. We put you in groups uh, with people that are not really competitive with you or not competitors at all. Uh, and it gives you a chance to just share best practice ideas and especially bring those challenges that you're facing. So email forum at the brooksgroup.com. Producer Rich, if you'd put that in uh, uh, maybe as a to everybody so they could get that, that would be great. Um, the other question uh, or thing that I would encourage you to do is uh, we have a Q&A function in the webinar and I ask you to just go ahead and uh, uh, if you have a question, ask it through that mechanism and we will answer those as we go through the podcast or either, uh, if not at the end of the webinar. Uh, Michelle, we have some additional though that really focuses in on today's topic. What are people doing on internal calls uh, to improve those? So you wanna share that data? Absolutely, so um, as you mentioned, Russ, we did put this out in the survey, this is one of our new questions for the week to really kind of gather information on what you all uh, as our audience are, are doing. Some trends, we, and this was kind of an open response uh, question. So we, uh, we wanted to get the full information from you all and uh, lots of great ideas. I would say that there's some, some clusters of, of information. Uh, a lot of you are focusing on new product training, um, updated products. So spending this time um, really upskilling your team, focusing on product knowledge. Uh, within that same vein as well, doing some role plays uh, around skills. So using that time, if you're not able to get uh, connected with customers, using that time to do role plays and some upskilling, some uh, virtual selling training came up. Um, joking, joking and, and humor is another way that uh, you all are getting your team's attention. So there was uh, one respondent who said that um, they get online, get on their Zoom calls in a Hawaiian shirt, sunglasses and a beach hat. Um, so I think that's uh, uh, providing some humor and, and trying to add some levity. Um, you all are also uh, allowing some time for the team to, to have some social conversation or some personal conversation before you segue into, um, into your business conversations. Obviously, Zoom and video conferencing is huge right now. Um, and I would also say that, uh, that our, our respondents are scheduling more frequent uh, contact through these tools. So maybe a, a huddle every morning or a huddle every afternoon to share ideas or just kind of recap what they've learned for the day. Other tools are also popular, um, Slack, WhatsApp um, are, are, were specifically mentioned, and then some social opportunities as well. So I know, um, I think Russ, you and I, we've mentioned this before, but virtual happy hours, so getting together at five o'clock and, and having some, some social conversation and, and engagement can keep people uh, engaged as well. Absolutely. All good ideas. Um, just to kind of highlight a couple of those, uh, Michelle talked about, you know, breaking out into smaller calls for either producting uh, information on markets um, uh, or even presentation training, uh, sharing uh, proposal templates or presentations. One of the things we're hearing is the things that a sales organization struggled to keep up with just flat out wouldn't do a few months ago, they're now willing to look. So maybe it's updating the, the CRM or uh, cleaning out the CRM data, um, calling new prospects. There's a, there's a hunger new connection. And so this ability to be able to, uh, to have a new group of prospects that we can go after all makes sense. Uh, role-playing, uh, customer salesperson, product expert, getting together in three, uh, and kind of simulated sales call. This is something I've done in my past in annual sales meetings where um, the, the best way to learn uh, a new product is to, to, to be in a sales meeting. So you can have a salesperson start the, the customer, ask questions, the product expert responds. So you're seeing it not in a, in a, hey, here's a PowerPoint slide with a lot of bullets, but you're really seeing it in the take that happens between a customer uh, and, the, and the salesperson. 
Uh, another thing that they're doing is kind of reviewing what has been successful in the past. I call this my biggest win ever and what I learned. Uh, so you give over a portion of each sales meeting for people to talk about kind of what was the biggest success that they had and what did they learn it or you could flip it around to be what's the, the biggest deal that I lost that I thought I had and, and what did I learn. Again, skills training perspective, helping our reps to become more perceptive. This also, if you're looking to keep your reps uh, focused on the business, is something that a little preparation time, so it gives them something to do there. Um, Michelle mentioned that a lot of people do product training or market training. Um, I like this idea of a, what I call a competitor field trip. You assign a competitor to certain groups of people, and they go off and deep dive into their websites, into their press releases, who are their big customers, and then come back and report on the competitors. Not only is it a channel more about products, but what are the competitors, and, and what do you think they're going to do? What are their messages that they're sending out to, to folks? Uh, what are they trying to communicate? What are they trying to, um, uh, to keep uh, in front of their customers? And how can you learn to respond to those? Um, we also did a, uh, I've heard of a power prospect search that you set a time every day from say it's, uh, it's 9 to 9.45 and people are going to go hard after new prospects, either researching them or making calls. And then at 9.45, you get on the phone and, and say, all right, what was your success rate? You know, I found 12, I had three conversations. You set the time right for your business. But again, it gives them a very focused activity uh, that's kind of ready, set, go. Uh, report. And so they get ready, uh, they go, and then come back and give you the information. Um, one of the things that we're seeing in organizations, and we're going to, I think, maybe talk about this a little bit more, Nick, on the, for, um, the webinar, is um, how do we reinvent our organizations? All of us have frustrations that are part of our sales life. Uh, if there's ever going to be a time where we need to think about what's the new organization look like? How do we become more agile? How do we become um, more digital if that fits our business? Uh, how do we become better at customer service? This is a great time to brainstorm, maybe just with your sales team or with other departments uh, and come up with some ideas that, that you would like to see implemented. Again, a, a way to deal with um, the frustration of being at home by dealing with some of those frustrations we deal with day in and day out. Uh, and this one, I have to admit, came from, uh, from my forum this week. Make sure you've got a leaderboard. Whatever your new KPIs are that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, salespeople want to be measured, and they want to know what their numbers are and, and where they rank, uh, but they also just want to understand where they are in the new KPIs or the new key performance indicators that you set up. So let them know how they're doing compared to their peers in uh, uh, whether it's finding new prospects or going through training, um, you know, you might want to say, look, there's five pieces of content, you know, and here's somebody who's gone through all five, somebody who's gone through three, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a good way to focus the team on business. But Michelle said there's also this drive to be able to talk about humor. And I'm going to call that just fun. Uh, when we are out selling together, um, you know, we get windshield time. Uh, we get that time over breakfast or lunch to be able to, uh, to talk with people, or maybe it's uh, it's around the coffee pot if we all share an office. Uh, we've been thinking of ideas to be creative on Zooms. Uh, one of the things we talk about is this uh, this thing where everyone goes off and finds something that's important to them. In my office, for example, um, I keep a, a Wonder Bread bank, uh, and that's important to me because my mom put herself through college representing Wonder Bread in uh, in grocery stores uh, or in California, helping people eat bread with no nutritional value. Uh, but whichever way you put it, uh, that's something that's important to me. And so getting each of your team members on a meeting to share one thing uh, helps you get to know a little bit about each other. And again, this will be uh, a function of your team culture and, and how they interact with each other. Uh, another one that we I've been a part of is meet my pet. And so people bring their dogs or their cats or whatever it is. Uh, and again, in this new world where um, those are parts of inter, uh, interruptions or interactions. Uh, it's a great way to do it. Um, I've asked people on Zoom calls to, to play this game. I call it quarantine footwear. What are you wearing uh, for a shoe right now? Uh, and maybe you know, most people are working in slippers. Some put shoes on. It just gives you a chance to kind of laugh about the fact that, hey, we're all in this together and, and we can be empathetic. 
A couple of ideas, uh, kind of the next level. I've done this with my team of facilitators. Uh, you can both create crossword puzzles, and this is just a, a sample case you can go in terms of eclipsecrossword.com. Or if you go to puzzlemaker.discoveryeducation.com, you can actually word search. This is, you have columns of letters and you go find uh, particular names. You can set up vocabulary that's important to you. Uh, I did one this week on vocabulary related to impact. I did another one on the things we miss because we're all at home. Uh, be creative in what you do. I thought this was kind of a filler that, that my folks would, would go through it and then just kind of turn it off. Um, they made me stay on that puzzle until they had found every single word. There's enough competition in them that they wanted it. It fully engaged them. It gave them some energy. Um, it's a great idea to do halfway through a sales call. If you feel like energy is starting to decline, go ahead and, and, and pull up the, a, a word puzzle. And um, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, you can do other things uh, like, you know, what are you streaming? Uh, to get ideas of, of what people are watching, or maybe what are you gaming, if you have the right demographic for your team. The hours Michelle's always touched on. Uh, one other idea that I didn't get a chance to, to put in the slide, but I think is a great one, uh, again, one of our, our clients, is uh, this is a good time for the sales team to maybe record videos back to other departments. If you've got a warehouse that uh, is still close to each other and, and they're, uh, they're going to go into work every day, uh, Maybe you need to just send a quick video to, to their manager and head share that says, hey, we're, we're out here fighting to get you a bit, but we really appreciate you. Um, so all of those things are, uh, uh, are, are ideas that we can do. Um, Michelle, I do think, though, there's uh, some research and survey data around what can we do with our customers. Some of that next. Absolutely. We're going to get to that. We'll, we'll touch on that. I will say we did the, um, the puzzles um, activity in a sales meeting um, internally with the Brooks group and it was very engaging uh, and people absolutely got into it. Um, and then we've also done um, uh, take pictures of your home office and um, had to guess who that, who the home office is. To. So some other ideas just for, for you know, encouraging some fun and, and engagement. But Russ, you're right. We talked about um, what creative things have you done or coached others to do to get a customer or prospect's attention um, before a call or during a call? And I know that this was a hot topic for my forum. I hosted a, a forum this week as well. And how do you, how do you maintain engagement? Um, what do those conversations look like? How do, you, how do you communicate with customers right now? Our survey data, um, overwhelmingly, the, the response was empathy, personal connection, um, still trying to really relate and, and help customers understand that you know and understand and feel um, connected to where they are right now. Maybe it's not a good time to sell, uh, but just de demonstrating that, that level of empathy. In addition, a couple of other ideas that came up. Um, offering to have lunch delivered, so doing a lunch and learn, for instance, um, an educational uh, session for a customer and sending Grubhub or DoorDash or Uber Eats. Uh, we also had someone along those same lines, I think with more of a local territory, uh, say that they go out and um, they get local restaurant gift certificates to distribute to customers. Uh, and that is uh, two benefits, right? So you're supporting your, your local businesses as well as uh, providing a benefit to your customers. Uh, all other ideas, forwarding free resources or thought leadership, coming up with a drip campaign uh, that's really educational in nature and, and that may require working with your, your marketing department. Um, we had one person who indicated that they are using a resource off of our website, 13 Winning Questions to Probe Deeper, that's available on our website uh, to help facilitate conversations. Uh, and um, just really, again, trying to connect in with customers with that level uh, of empathy. Thanks, Michelle. I was uh, notified my audio was a little weak, so hopefully that's better. Is that, can you hear me, Michelle? You want to nod and say yes? Yes. Okay, good. Um, sorry about that. Uh, we have a large gaming neighborhood, I believe. 
Um, so here's some other ideas that, that we have heard about and tried creative customer interactions. Uh, one is virtualizing service calls. Having, uh, if you're normally in front of your clients and, and needing to check things, if they're still in their facility, and I know everyone isn't, uh, setting up a FaceTime call or uh, a Google call, being able to get video, look at um, certain things that you would normally do and make recommendations back. Uh, it's a way for you to stay engaged with your customers and, and make sure that those service uh, calls are happening if they need to be. Michelle touched on virtual lunches or virtual coffees. If you have a local territory, um, this is really a good opportunity to do two things. One, you can connect with the, your customer. Um, but we have a company that I got a, a notice of last night they're a local coffee shop. They put together a package that you can have two coffees, uh, two orange juices, and two pastries delivered at a given time uh, the day. So you could, uh, again, if you've got a relationship with some of your, some of your customers and either they're at the office or uh, you, you can get their home address um, in an appropriate way, uh, to just deliver coffee, deliver a pastry, um, deliver a cake. There's a lot of things that are being delivered right now. Uh, and it's a way for you to just kind of sit down, share a cup of coffee together, and have a conversation. Uh, another one we've seen is uh, what I call the IOU around the thing I miss most. So in your conversations with your customers, being able to just ask, you know, what is it that, that you really are looking forward to? And we can go back out. And, uh, and setting up an IOU, saying, you know what, great, you miss a certain restaurant or a certain sports activity or whatever it might be. It's a way for you to kind of get a date on the calendar, maybe not specifically, but you know when this is lifted, there's going to be that ability to get the connection. And especially if you think that people are going to really be pushed and crushed afterwards, uh, it's great to get in line, if you will. Uh, let me recommend um, gift cards, uh, online things that you've seen. Um, again, as a normal flow of a customer meeting, you're going to be talking about some of those things that you're engaged with. So if you uh, have seen a service or a product that's really uh, been working for you, uh, that's one that, that you could go to. Um, daily trivia contests. This is a couple that, that I have been involved with. Uh, again, if you have the right kind of customer base and have the right relationships with them, you can ask them if they'd like to be a part of a daily contest. You send out a question at a given time. Uh, first person to get it correctly um, you know, gets a point, and then they also get to come up with a trivia question for next week. Um, gives you a chance to have some interaction. It's something for people to look forward to. It's a break in the day, and you get to learn something. Uh, one note, however, uh, you can't Google the answer. I got in trouble and banned for two days on the one I was on uh, because they asked the question. I Googled it, and um, I found out how not to play trivia. Uh, and then what I think that's important is, is sort of virtualizing swag. Um, we all, uh, swags are specific gifts that we hand out, cap, hats, pens, uh, whatever it might be. A uh, couple of different ideas here. If it's uh, appropriate, um, you can set up uh, virtual stores uh, through some of the clothing vendors where um, you could set up a logoed shirt and then you can uh, give uh, a gift. So if you're normally going to be giving away hats or shirts at this time, it's a way for people to still log on, pick up that free shirt, and be able to get it. Um, or you can do things like uh, an Etsy coupon. If you see something online, uh, just say, hey, I'd, I'd like to send this to you. It may not be branded with your company, but again, it's a way to help small businesses and get something in front of them. One of our facilitators um, sends out a little toy robot after each of his calls. Um, it costs less than $2. It's like a dollar and a half to mail it, sends it to their home. And, and now the next time that they have a, ver a Zoom call, they put the robot up on the call and they have this sort of inside connection with each other. Um, Staples, Office Max will deliver certain things. If there's something you found really useful and it's low cost or in the right cost range, um, Staples, Office Max will typically deliver for free next day if you're in the right geographic areas. So you can say, man, the thing that I've used the most is um, uh, you know, X and uh, be able to help your clients out with that. Again, just creative ideas around how to do it. And I understand you can't do it in every industry and across every territory, but in certain places, those are, are going to work. Those are kind of the ideas that, that we have seen and, and have had. I guess I'll just add one other thing. The number one thing that came back in that survey was the word empathy. People are still saying that in all of their customer interactions, they're really trying to have empathy. So with this, it's the portion of the, of the webinar where we open it up for questions. Uh, please feel free to chat through the, uh, the Q&A window. 
Uh, we did get one question around um, just the unique status of their business. Uh, their team has currently been laid off and uh, they can't legally uh, have occupational or virtual meetings with them. So now they're kind of preparing for what's next and I have asked for any suggestions about that preparation. Uh, I, I think that from a content perspective, you're probably doing the right thing in terms of, of helping them stay up to speed around uh, not just customer needs and changes, but also competitive needs and changes. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is in planning that training, try to have some, some breaks where they can have some of these fun activities. Uh, if they've been laid off and are looking to come back, uh, they're clearly going to want to get productive as quickly as possible, but you do want them to stay engaged through that training and to learn as much as they can. So that would be, uh, that would be my suggestion. Uh, another question that came up is what is swag? Uh, there is a formal um, definition of swag. I don't, do you remember what it is, Michelle? I don't. I was sitting here trying to remember, um, and I've heard. I've actually heard several definitions of it, but specific to this, I cannot remember. There uh, you go. Stuff okay. we all. Stuff we all get. We all get. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank but you. It's, but it's the going. branded things. <laughs> it's it's the branded things we hand out. Whether it's pins, um, you know coffee mugs, uh, baseball caps. Um, most sales organizations have some things that they give to their customers with their logos on it. So thanks to, uh, uh, to Mary and Andrew for, uh, for answering that question. Any other questions? Oh, some people say they call it collateral. That's, that's the other name that it's used for as well. Or tchotchkes, that's another one. Tchotchkes yeah. is another one. Yep. Yeah. Somebody did ask um, on the, the data relative to the length of time that um, we expect to have a business impact from this current environment. So is it, is it last in total or from the point forward? Um, you know, initially it was uh, in total, but as we go from week to week, it's, it's become a, a rolling estimate. Um, so obviously we're four weeks into our webinar series and tracking it. We, um, and we do still have a, a handful of folks who are saying another four weeks. All right, let me just kind of hit the, the quick summary here. We'll still take questions if some come in. Um, so what do we do? Number one, to help focus the, the team, um, you know, you've got to use creativity to put boredom to work. Uh, get them out of the idea of thinking I'm bored or I've done everything I can do, be creative around it. Um, replace those physical connections we used to get around the coffee pot or around the, uh, the windshield time with, uh, or, or maybe even with WAM, and, and WAM stands for walking around management. It's the old HP style of uh, being out and about amongst your people. Uh, you've got to be able to figure out a way to replace that with some of the personal ideas we shared uh, and to take time for fun because uh, we do have humor in, um, uh, in the interactions that we have. And then also be creative about your customer interactions. Uh, empathy, as we said, is number one. Uh, but a lot of organizations are telling us, okay, we've made the first calls. Now how do we get to the, to the next? Uh, what do we do next? Um, make sure that you're reinforcing your key values, that, there's, that there is value being delivered in those uh, conversations and the way in which you engage is appropriate for your organization. Um, different groups, uh, again, interact in different ways and uh, make sure that those are, those are well. If you're, um, uh, and you know how your customers want to be able to be, uh, be talked to and engaged. Uh, make it something that's relational appro relationally appropriate to break the tedium. If you have a great relationship, you can do more than if it's an early on relationship. Don't ask for something to which you haven't gained that rapport. And then um, if you can, uh, virtualize uh, the stuff we all get, the collateral, the tchotchkes, the giveaways uh, for your prospects. Um, you can still be the person who's, um, uh, who's providing and connecting with them in that way. Uh, Russ, we have uh, a question we about um, how to access, I think, past webinars. So those are, um, the recorded versions are on our website, uh, brooksgroup.com, and I believe it's under the resources tab. Uh, we'll also be adding research briefs, which summarize the data as well as our recommendations that, uh, that we're presenting to, um, to address the data. 
You can find that on our website as well. And then if you're interested in joining one of our leadership forums, uh, email forum at the Brooks Group. And uh, to join and get uh, assigned to a forum for next week, we would like to hear from you by uh, Sunday. Okay. Um, we had a question about what are companies planning on doing differently around, you know, PPE or employee temperatures as they start to come to work. Um, uh, we have not uh, sampled that yet, but uh, uh, as I say now, we've kind of gotten out of what I believe is this, uh, this initial crisis period. Um, we'll start to be thinking about what, what's the, the new normal look like, and uh, we'll definitely take that into consideration for future, um, for future surveys and, and for future webinars. Uh, and by the way, if you have other questions you'd love us to survey or uh, other ideas or topics for the webinars, uh, we'd love to hear those as well. Um, uh, you know, feel free to, to email either Michelle or I. Uh, you can respond to any of the emails that you get from the Brooks Group around, about this webinar with a question or a topic. Um, or um, uh, I guess those are the two best ways to be able to do that. Uh, you can also send email through our, uh, uh, through our website, but any of those we'd be glad to uh, uh, to take your information. These are what you need to know. That's what we really tried to strive for uh, the last four weeks, and we're going to keep that up. All right. If there's nothing else, um, I want to wish you all a, a great Thursday. Uh, the reason we came on Thursday, by the way, is in about a dozen states. Uh, tomorrow is uh, an official holiday for Good Friday. Uh, so uh, I hope you all get, a, get a, some kind of a break for the weekend, we've been talking internally that it's, uh, there's been, for most of us, a pretty heavy pace and uh, uh, a lot of weekends worked and, and maybe this weekend, uh, hopefully people will get a, a day or a part of a day to, to be able to take off. We'll be back, as Michelle said, next Friday at our regular time, 2 o'clock Eastern. Um, so thanks. Michelle, anything you want to add? Uh no, just uh, again, if you're interested in joining the forums, please feel free to, uh, to email forum at the Brooks Group. We look forward to hearing your questions and comments uh, as we move forward and, and determine new topics for these, these weekly webinars, and we're just thrilled to have you join us each week. Thank you. All right. Thank you.